<laughs> hey, YouTube, it's, it's me, Zipster. I want to tell you, I haven't done this in so long, I kind of forget what you're supposed to do. It's been crazy. I, I know I haven't been around, but... Oh my God, first I was in New York for a couple of days rehearsing for a show there. Then I came home and we had this storm and there was a power outage for four days. Then I got sick with a cold, in case you can tell, or a cold flu kind of, it was terrible. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just starting to feel a little bit better today, so I thought I'd come and say hello anyway. Okay, this storm that we had made me reevaluate everything I ever thought about trees. Okay, but let me start off by saying I am a big tree lover. I have been raising and training bonsai for almost 30 years, maybe a little more than 30 years. So I have a great appreciation for trees. I think they are beautiful. But because of this last storm, I do believe that trees should no longer be allowed around power lines or people in general. I think we should only allow trees in the woods and in open fields. And as pretty as they make a neighborhood look, it ain't good because our storm came early and very early with a freak storm and all the trees still had their leaves on it, okay? So the tr snow's laying on the leaves and the, the branches are getting heavier and the next thing you know, kaboom, the branches start breaking. As you see here, I'm going to show you a little bit. This is right around my neighborhood. Look at these trees. It's a damn mess. So yeah, of course, when the branches come down, the power lines come down. There was something like three million people from Maine to Maryland, Maryland, that had no power. That's a lot of people. Our power went out on Saturday and it didn't come on until Tuesday. And let me tell you, it is not fun when you cannot get on the interwebs and you wind up having to read a book by a candle with your feet in the oven to stay warm. I felt like Abraham frickin' Lincoln or something. Okay. So yeah, bad enough that the power went out for all that time and there were no stores open. I mean, it was a mess. No traffic lights anywhere. The whole thing was just a frickin' mess. Okay, that's bad enough. One reason why trees should not be allowed in neighborhoods and around power lines. Another reason. Okay, so I read in a town about 30 miles from here, there's a 74-year-old dude sitting in his Barco lounger watching NASCAR or, I don't know, whatever. And he kind of does dwarf, and all of a sudden, the tree out in front of his house fell down in his house, fell on him, and kaboom, dun 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 dead. Dead. Yeah, now that's pretty bad. And what do you do, what happens when you die when there's a power outage, okay? First of all... Okay, they can take you to the morgue and stuff, but they can't even embalm you because I'm sure, pretty sure that it takes electricity to like suck the blood out of you and pump the, what's that stuff, formaldehyde back in you. So yeah, and who wants a funeral? You know, if they can't embalm you, you have to have the funeral right away, but what if there's no power? Then there you want a dark funeral home and you can't even play that mixtape that you made to make everybody sad about how wonderful you are and make everybody cry at your funeral, you know? And then you could wait for the power to come back on, but that wouldn't be very good either because of little body refrigerators, they would be warm, and you would wind up getting pretty skunky, I would think, after a couple of days, because things start, uh, you, you know, it, it wouldn't be pretty at all. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, well, maybe I'm not feeling as good as I thought. But anyway, I just want to stop and say hi, so okay, um, thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>